And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. So what happens when you mix checkers and chess? I'm sure this has been tried before, but Angelo Parazzi from Warfrog uh, publishes his own game, decided to do it in a very simple way. And so what we have here in Pie Frog or Pifrog, or I don't know what it is, how you pronounce it, you have a two-player game in which one person controls a bunch of pigs, which move like kings in chess, and the other person has frogs, which move like, well, checkers, and they jump. Easy enough, thematic, I suppose. Let's look at the game. So here's the board, and let's focus on just the actual board itself. One player starts with their pigs on a bunch of mud spots, and the other person starts with their frogs on a bunch of lily pads. Now, when you start the game, you can have these pigs or frogs rotate it in any direction you want. However, you have to realize that that's going to be important over the course of the game. On a player's turn, they can do one of two things. They can rotate one of their pieces, like of us, or they can move one of their pieces, and they just pick the piece and they move in that space. Now, both pieces change the move the exact same way. The problem is the way that they capture, or as the game says, eat the other players, which brings up an interesting uh, quandary on how pigs and frogs eat each other, but what have you, is different. A pig eats a frog simply by moving into the space. There, captured it, it's gone. However, that frog is protected if there is another frog directly behind it. Now, a pig can do it diagonal, but again, if there's a frog behind it diagonally, then that frog is protected. A frog eats a pig by jumping over it. Again, it can't do that if there is another pig in the spot behind it. It cannot jump over it. Now, frogs are faster in this game because they jump over other pieces to capture them, but pigs don't have to land on the square behind the target. They simply can move up and crush. Folks, that's the game. It's really that simple. You're going to just be moving around pieces, and you're going to try to do one of two things to win the game. You're going to capture five of your opponent's pieces, or you're going to get three of your pieces into spots, the starting spots of your opponent. At that point, you win the game. So, in essence, I would say, if anything, this is closer to being a variant of checkers, where facing matters and where one side actually doesn't jump to capture, they replace the other piece. Let's talk about the pieces for a moment. The board itself is actually just a large piece of paper, which I have in a protector here, which keeps it pretty well. It, you know, it could be bent around to some degree. The pieces themselves are have like a foam backing on them, which makes them slide in the board fairly easily, but not so much that they're slipping all over the place. And then the rules themselves just come in a paper like this. The problem with all this is, is in storing the game itself. Now, I can put all of the pieces in a plastic bag, take the rules, and stick everything into the sheet here. And then I can put that in this giant War Angel notebook that was made, not so much just for this game, but for keeping maps of War Angel in it. And that works well in my situation, but that may not work well for most people. So I want to point that out. Still, it's not a difficult game to carry around, and I suppose you could even roll the game up and carry it around like that. The game itself is interesting. I don't know that I would consider it innovative or striking, but it is a nice little two-player game, and I found myself playing it multiple times just because I thought, man, is one of these figures stronger than the other? At first, I thought the frogs might have an advantage because they could move farther on the board. Then I thought, no, the pigs, because when they hit someone, they're not putting themselves in a terrible position. The game could end up as a slow game if players sit there and think and think, as in any game of this genre, chess checkers not excluded. So basically, it's a fast, fun game. Nothing special, nothing new, but it's a game I think that will attract kids to learning about these type of abstract games, if anything, because of the animals and imagining a frog eating a pig. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.